Hello, geometry. Welcome to 3.3. .3. Prove that lines are parallel. I can use corresponding angles, converse property. I can construct parallel lines. I can prove theorems about parallel lines, and I can use the transitive property of parallel lines. So there's a lot going on here. Um, hopefully, I can help you through this. Don't be afraid of the proofs. Well, I'll get you there. All right. So let's see if we can help fi um, Alex find x. Look at these two angles. Um, those are corresponding angles. So with corresponding angles of parallel lines, okay, we are using parallel lines. I should have put parallel lines here or actually mark them. All right, well, here we go. These are corresponding angles, so they are congruent. So x plus 20 is equal to 52 because remember, corresponding angles are congruent. Well, I need x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides. x is equal to 32 degrees. All right, not too bad. Um, so I did change this to Caitlin. Write the converse of the statement. If it is rating, then Caitlin needs an umbrella. So if Caitlin needs an umbrella, then it is raining. All right, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my son, uh, Blaze, is vacuuming. He's hoping to get gems for some amp or something. All right, moving on. Postulate 16, Score, uh, corresponding angles Converse. Okay, now I did a converse up here. Remember what converse did? I didn't mention it, but it switches the statements. Okay, it moves them around from PQ to QP, if you recall when we uh, covered that. So notice how before we would start with parallel lines and then we'd get cor um, we'd get the angles that are congruent. Well, guess what's happening? If the two lines are cut by a transversal, they didn't say anything about the lines, so the corresponding angles are congruent. So this is what we start with. Start with the congruent angles. Okay, that's supposed to be an equal sign. So we're starting with these angles. If these angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Uh, finish with parallel lines. Okay, so remember before we started with parallel lines, we had congruent angles. Now it's the opposite. Okay, example one find the values of y that make m parallel to l. Okay, so look at these lines. We can't assume they're parallel, but um, I am going to tell you that these angles are congruent. So I'm going to put arcs here. 5y plus 6 has got to be congruent to 121. Okay, well, we can use alternate exterior angles are congruent or you can do well I shouldn't have written that right there or we can do vertical angles so that means this is 5y plus 6 and then look at these two then corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so they work out um, in either case. So what I want to do first is subtract 6 on both sides. 5y is equal to 115, then divide by 5. y is equal to 23. There you go. So if, if y is 23, then those lines are parallel. Okay, next page. Okay, so more converse theorems. Again, we're going to start with the angles and then prove that the lines are parallel. So there's some information. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, if two lines are cut by transversal, so that the alternate interior angles are congruent, so we're starting with these, then the lines are parallel. So I don't know if you can see this. It says if angle two is congruent to angle three, then they're parallel. So again, start with congruent angles 
and you're going to finish with parallel lines. Okay, how about this one? I'm not sure if I have a new picture on this one. On my notes it says put a new picture on it. But So again, if you have two lines cut by a transversal, they don't say anything about the lines. So the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So you start with congruent angles. Getting the idea? How about this one? Consecutive interior angles. Now if you recall, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So they're saying if these are supplementary, meaning if angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so remember another word for consecutive interior would be same side interior. All right, so I believe I changed this to JD. JD was stenciling design on his kitchen walls. I'd kill him if he did that. How can you tell if the top and bottom lines of his design are parallel? Well, what you can do is you can measure this angle with your protractor and this angle, okay? Measure those two angles. Those are alternate interior angles. If they're congruent, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so think about it. You have this line, this line, and then you're looking at this one right here. Measure that angle and this angle. Those are congruent lines are parallel. You didn't have to use alternate interior angles. You could have used corresponding These corresponding, this angle and this angle. Would be. We're going to have those. Okay? So, next one. Uh oh. Look at this. You know, I didn't even realize it. I hope you saw the whole last page. Okay. Um, I'll have to watch the video to make sure. So, let's prove that if, this is what we're going to start with, those two angles are supplementary, meaning they have to 180, then the lines are parallel. Well, look where 1 and 7 are. We haven't learned anything about same side exterior. Okay, so we're going to have to work with it. Starting off, information that you're given. Angle 1 and angle 7 are supplementary. Given. So if you're given a proof and you have to do this on a test or a quiz and you don't know where to start, you get a point for that. Okay? Uh, number two. Well, because they tell me they're supplementary, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 7 is equal to 180. That's the definition of a supplementary angle, right? It's what they do. Yeah, we have to list that out. Definition of supplementary angles. Okay, now look at measure. Look at the, in the picture one and three. What are one and three called? And also look at five and seven. What are five and seven called? Those are linear pairs, and they have to one eighty. So I'm going to list that both. I'm going to pick measure of angle one plus the measure of angle 3 equal 180. I'm putting these two together. Measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 7 is equal to 180. Okay? So these two equal 180, these two equal 180. Why? Linear pair postulate. All right, so now let's uh, take a look at this. Look at the measures of, look, let's put it all together. I'm going to add up all four of these angles. And then what it will it equal? Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 7. It's going to equal 360. I'm adding those two angles up. So addition property of equality. 
simple stuff, huh? Better write smaller. Okay, number five. Now, take a look at these right here. Angle one and angle seven. Angle one plus angle seven equal what? 180, so I'm gonna substitute that in. 180 plus the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five equal 360. Substitution. So I just substituted that right here. What do we got going on next? Okay, I'm going to subtract 180 on both sides. So you have measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 equal 180. Subtraction property of equality. Now, what do I have? 3 and 5. <gasps> I know about 3 and 5. I did not know about 1 and 7. But 3 and 5 are called same side interior. So this is a same side interior. I know. If that equals 180, then the lines are parallel. Because same side interior angles converse. Okay, that's the, the converse of it, okay? Um, actually, remember the other word for same side interior would be consecutive interior. There we go. What do you think? Okay, that was pretty lengthy. I want you to be able to follow these, but there are easier proofs that you'll be tested on. Okay, in figure, in the figure, we have A is parallel to B, okay? So this line and this line. And then angle one and three are congruent. So I want to put an arc right there and an arc right there. Prove that these two lines are parallel. Okay, so first of all, again, start with the information you're given. A is parallel to B, and then angle one is congruent to angle three. When in doubt, write that down. All right, so now what do I know? If I know that A is parallel to B, then angle one is congruent to angle two. Why? What are these called? They're parallel lines. It's outside of the parallel line, so it's alternate exterior. They alternate on the transversal exterior. So angle one is congruent to angle two alternate exterior angles are congruent. Can you get all that in there? All right, now, one is congruent to three, and one is congruent to two, then I know that two is congruent to three. Oop. Why? This is transitive. Transitive is like a substitution. Okay, if angle two and three are congruent, if this is congruent to that one, those are alternate interior angles, then C and D are parallel. So that's what we're looking for because of the alternate interior angles converse. It's very important. Hopefully you saw all of this. Okay, last page going fast. Transitive property of parallel lines. This is actually kind of easy. If L is parallel to M and M is parallel to N, then L is parallel to N. Okay, so that's your transitive. It's like a substitution, um, but not exactly. Okay, so in this figure, each rung of the ladder is parallel to the rung directly above it. Explain why the top rung is parallel to the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is list like each rung. Rung is like the slats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, I listed each one um, numerically. So rung one is parallel to rung two. Rung two is parallel to rung 
3, etc. And then all the way down to rung 6 is parallel to rung 7. According to the transitive property of parallel lines, therefore, rung 1 is parallel to rung 7. It's by your transitive property. of parallel lines. You see that? Okay, everybody have a nice one. Splitting that into two days. There's your standard. Have a great weekend.